Hi, and welcome to Some Financial. I am Francesco Marzola, and this is my second video on the YouTube channel Some Financial. So I hope that uh, after the feedback yesterday, the audio is better in uh, this one. Today, we're going to talk about uh, very important tools for all the sommeliers in the world, but not only for the sommelier, but also for private people as well that have a wine cellar at home. And actually, we're going to talk about uh, wine opener. I'm going to show you some of the wine opener that I have in my collection here at home and uh, afterwards I'm going to show you uh, also the use of one special wine opener on a bottle of wine that actually I'm going to drink tonight. So first out, we start with the most classical one. This is a classic uh, wine opener. Almost everybody should have this one and it's very simple to find it. As you see, here it's divided in two parts with the spiral and of course with the cut foiler. This is the most common one, it's the one that uh, here in Norway you can buy at the wine monocle, for example. If you want to go a step up in quality and in style, then I suggest you to go with this brand. This brand is uh, actually an Italian brand called Murano. Here, as you can see, the difference is that uh, the two parts to pull out the cork are separate. So we have a small one first and a long one. And when you open it, uh, after that you cut the foil, with the foil cutter, which is a much higher quality than the normal pull tabs. And of course you insert a spiral in the cork. Then you have actually two parts. First, the small one that will come in contact with the head of the bottle, and then the long one to pull out the cork, finally. Another uh, version of this uh, um, wine opener, which is a, a bit higher than the first one that I show you, is from a brand called Pultex. Pultex as well uh, has a much more uh, uh, compact uh, style of uh, uh, wine opener. Again, of course, you have this small uh, foiler to cut the foil, and then uh, the spiral, and of course, the long part to pull out the cork. What's different here is that uh, to pull out the cork, it's only one piece, and you have this uh, small uh, part here that you have to push in after that you insert the spiral in the cork. So once the cork is in, you push this one, and this is the first part that you have, that you put pressure on to pull out the cork. And once the cork is halfway, then you move it to this part. So those are quite basic uh, wine opener that uh, uh, the majority of us, of course, has at home. Of course, wine opener during uh, uh, the years it develops to this form that we have now. I want to show you a very old style of wine opener. This is uh, the old way that the wine opera were made. This is actually, I found it in Italy in February. I was there uh, for private reason and I found it in a uh, flea market. Fortunately, it was uh, in Milan actually, <laughs> but unfortunately, I came out much way before the Corona outbreak. So this is a wine opener that is almost 100 years old. It's the old way. So you just have the spiral that you pull in the cork and once that is in, you basically just pop it out. And that's why as well uh, in the old days uh, you connected the, um, a bottle of wine with the sound of a popping cork because actually you were supposed to pop a cork when you were pulling it out. Of course during the years uh, the wine openers developed. Again we went to the uh, style of a wine opener that I showed you before and of course we have also some more high end. I'm going to show you some of my three best wine openers that I have here at home. I started with the first one that actually I got uh, as a gift when I became sommelier in 2014. This is a very well-known brand called Chateau La Guillaume. As you can see, the shape of the opener is uh, much more lean and more elegant. You always recognize the La Guillaume because it has uh, this uh, small uh, B uh, symbol on the uh, upper part of the opener. What I really like of this opener is actually the size of the blade. If you see the blade, it's a very long blade. It gives you very good control when you cut the foil. If we take uh, the basic one, for instance, you can see the difference in length when it comes to the blade. So the blade, it's very, very good. It's maybe one of the best blades that I used in a wine opener. And then of course you have again uh, the spiral. What's different as well is that here you don't have uh, two part uh, to pull out the cork. You just have a long one. And basically it's because the spiral, it's a quite special type of spiral, like also for another that I'll show you afterwards. It's a spiral that it expands once it's in the cork. So then it keeps the cork together in a way and it's easier to just pull it out with one movement. 
Another very high-end uh, opener that I have here at home and is basically uh, the one that I use most both at work and here at home because it's one of my favorite is uh, this brand here, the Code 38. So the Code 38 as you can see comes with this beautiful box. You open the box uh, and then inside uh, you see two things of course, the opener itself and then this small matter. If you take out from the box the wine opener, you can see the beautiful line. What is really beautiful with this opener is, first of all, is that it's one of the lightest opener that I ever had. You can find different uh, uh, model of the Code 38. All of them are quite light. Of course, uh, uh, the highest end uh, it's made 100% in titanium, so it's very, very light. This one that I have here is the halfway, so it's all covered in titanium and the uh, spiral is made of titanium, but you do have as well some stainless steel. So what is special again with this opener, like the Chateau Laguiole, is that you have only one piece to pull out the cork. You have this very strong uh, spiral. For instance, if you compare it to the Chateau Laguiole that I used for one year in a restaurant, you can see that the spiral got a bit loose. While the Code 38 and I use for two years quite a lot in the resin, the spiral is still firm. What's really beautiful is that if the spiral was supposed to get a bit loose, you can always use this matter to actually tighten up the spiral. So you put the matter here and then you just use a normal, open, uh, normal um, uh, instruments to just uh, tighten it up. Another beautiful feature, maybe the most the best feature of this opener is actually the blade. As you can see, compared to, for example, the Laguiole or the other one, it's not visible, the blade. You need to know how to pull it out. And if you see here, on the blade, you have uh, inserted into the wine opener. So just with a small pressure on the top, uh, it slides out as a really good blade. It is shorter than the Laguiole, but it's much sharper. And what's really beautiful is that you can sharp it because if you continue to put pressure on the top and you continue to pull it out, you can actually take out the blade from the opener. So then you can sharp it at any time you need. To insert it again, it's just to put pressure on the backbone until you hear the sound that the blade stops. And then again, a small pressure on the top and draw it in again. Last but not least, one of my favorite uh, uh, opener because it's an opener that you never risk to break a cork with and basically is the Durand opener. Durand opener again comes with this beautiful box. What's, bit, what's special of the Durand is that is a different style of opener. So if we take it out of the box you can see that the Durand is divided in two pieces. We have a spiral on one piece and then we have these two blades. These two blades, actually there is another opener which is made only with the two blades, which is called uh, the Butler's Friend or the Hoso. Butler's Friend is uh, the unofficial name. The reason why it's called Butler's Friend is that because in the old days, these were the high-end openers that the rich people used to have at their place. And the butler was the, the person in charge to find the wine for the Lord. Uh, with, what's uh, special with this opener is that you can actually pull out the cork and then insert it again with the same opener without any um, visible uh, sign of having uh, pulled it out. So then the legend says, uh, uh, the folklore legend says that uh, the butlers used to go down to the cellar of their masters and used to use the butler's friend to get a sip now and then. Because then you can, uh, they can always close it down again and they can always fill up again the bottle with maybe some water or maybe some other wine just to cover the direction. What is very safe with the Durand is that uh, it's an evolve, uh, evolution of the Butler's Friend. Butler's Friend is only the two blades and even though it's a very safe opener, it might get a bit difficult with very old bottle to pull out the cork. The Durand in, uh, includes as well a spiral. So basically when you use the Durand, you first put the spiral in the cork, after that of course you cut out the foil. So you insert the spiral in the cork and once that the spiral is all down in the cork, you insert the two blades. But what's special is that you don't have to insert the blades in those holes that you see here. You have to insert the blades on a different angle than the Durand. So in the end, the result is this one. By doing that, you secure the cork with the spiral and you pull it out beautiful with the two blades. I'm gonna show you afterwards how we are going to use it. 
This is my favorite opener. Uh, this is the one that I use most at work. And not only at work, but also at home. And this is the most uh, safe opener. I never broke a cork with this opener and I, I always use it for bottles that are older than uh, 15 to 20 years old. So now I'm gonna show you how to use uh, actually the Durand. I have here a bottle of wine. I said in the beginning I'm not gonna show you the one, so I'm gonna put it like this to not show the label. So first of all, uh, we need to, of course, when we open a bottle, we need to cut the foil. And there is always uh, uh, two ways of uh, thinking where, where you should cut the foil. Some people cut it up here, some are cut it down here. We sommelier and professionals, uh, we cut them, cut it always down here for several reasons. One of the reasons is that if you cut it here and it's not a really clean cut, uh, you can always uh, have some uh, small drops of wine that might drip down either on your tablecloth or on uh, other part of uh, that you don't want to. And the second reason is because then once uh, that you cut it here, if it's not clean cut, uh, you might get the wine in contact with the foil, with the outside foil, so you might contaminate the wine. So that's why always a clean cut down here. And if you see the moment that I'm doing it, uh, you put pressure on the neck of the bottle and then you turn it while you're pressing it. So you continue doing it like that, and then you go other way around, put pressure, cut, Put pressure and cut, put pressure and cut. You can take the time that you need. Once that you are done with this movement, you can see that under the foil is cut. So then you go or um, vertical and you cut the foil on this part of the, of the bottle because this is always the part that uh, it stick out of the bottle. So you cut it like this, like I'm doing it now. And then you still do a bit of pressure and you pull out uh, the foil. You see that the foil is coming out really, really beautiful. Well, in this guy is uh, stopped a bit. Also because I'm in a very strange position to cut it. I'm sitting, so it's not uh, maybe the easiest way to do it. But anyway, the foil uh, came beautifully. And if you see, it's a really clean cut. So now as I said, I'm gonna show you how to use the drum. So first of all, in with the spiral, there you go, go in all the way until it's tightened up. And now you take the two blades. If you remember in the beginning I said, do not put them in the two hole that you see here. Take the blades and put them in vertical, um, perpendicular. And if you see, the blades has two different lengths, one is a bit longer than the other. So first in with the longer one, secure the tip of it, and then in with the short one. Once that we are in, we need to do this movement. It's very elastic, these blades are very elastic, so just go all the way through. We are in, so now you keep the uh, good firm hand on the bottle and you start to pull out the cork. You see how easy corks come out? One tips, since the blades are longer than the cork, when you come at this stage, keep tight the blades and pull out the cork. And the reason is because these blades are on a quite high pressure. So if you just pull it out normally, they will open it up when they come out and you risk to break actually the glass and miss some glass in your wine. So a good firm hand on the blades and just pull it out like this. And this is, you see, a cork from a Durand. And now I'm going to show you another thing, again, what I said before, that uh, it's a quite nice uh, uh, trick to do when you have friends visiting, that you can actually take this cork and put it again in the bottle. And I'm going to show you how to do it, just for fun. So we have the two blades again, in with the cork, until the cork is on the top, in touch here. And then you see that the two blades are like, like that, so we Tighten them up again, bit of pressure, put in the blade, and there you go. Look at that, the cork is coming in again. Once that you are in this position, the cork is there in the side, you pull out the blades by doing this movement. And re always remember, when you come to the end, keep them with two firm hands or two firm fingers, because otherwise you risk you, you risk to 
break the glass. There you go. Battle has been corked again. So I hope you enjoyed this second video. I hope that uh, sound it's a bit better uh, this time. I'm still working on uh, making it a bit more technological and uh, then amateur as is me in uh, these first two videos. But uh, again, please leave me feedback uh, since it's the first times that I'm doing this and uh, uh, both on the technological and on, of course, if you find it interesting what we are talking about. For today, I will say goodbye to all and skol!